going on a cruise, I'm going to share the most common cruise packing mistakes, including a couple that I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that I've actually made. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, as organized as we all try to be before a cruise, it can happen that we actually forget something that is pretty important. Plus, there's other cruise packing mistakes that we can make as well. So what I'm going to do in this video is go through the 15 worst cruise packing mistakes that cruisers sometimes make so that you don't make them. Now, each of them is pretty important, so make sure that you watch till the end. Now, before I get started, I wanted to mention that if you find this video helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give the video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, let's get started. Number one mistake that cruisers sometimes make is forgetting to bring your passport or government ID. And these days, bringing your proof of vaccine and your test results is really important as well. Now, something to remember is do not pack this in your luggage. Make sure that you have this on you in something like some sort of passport wallet or a neck wallet or in your handbag. Unfortunately, not having these items with you will result in you not being able to board your cruise. So nothing is more important. Number two, overpacking. Now, please let me know if you're an overpacker, if you're a minimalist packer, there's no shame either way. Please let me know in the comments below. Now, I definitely am an overpacker. I'm always working on this. And that's why I do really use like a cruise packing list to keep myself on track, make sure that I don't bring too, too much, but I still have everything that I need. And I use a cruise outfit planner so that I plan out my outfits for the evening times. But at the same time, I always do bring a couple of extra outfits because I like to have a little bit of choice. Now, of course, I don't really want to overpack because then it does take me too long to pack before I go on a cruise. It takes me long to unpack when I'm on a cruise and it takes me long to pack up at the end of the cruise. Now I do have a cruise travel planner that I've actually worked on over the last year, just to make sure that you have cruise packing lists, that you have shore excursion forms, really anything that you would need to plan for your cruise is in this planner. Now what I'll do, if you do wanna check it out, is I'll leave it in the description below. Number three, underpacking. Now what do I mean by underpacking? Well, forgetting some of the things that you actually might need on the cruise. Now a lot of people have said that they actually have forgotten formal wear on their cruise and that is one of the mistakes that I made on a past cruise. Yes, my husband forgot his suit which was hanging right next to the suitcase and that stayed at home. Thank goodness he did have dress shoes in the suitcase along with dress pants and a dress shirt so he was okay for formal night but he would have preferred to have his suit. Now, some of the other things that people sometimes forget to bring on a cruise include socks. I know you wouldn't think that you'd need socks, but to do some of the activities on a cruise ship, you actually do need them or dress socks for a formal night. Shoes, belts, and accessories. Number four, forgetting to bring medication on a cruise. Now, of course, you have to remember your prescription medication, very, very important, but remember your over-the-counter medication as well. So everything from pain reliever to Imodium if you need it, to Tums for your stomach, maybe even some seasickness medication. So make sure that you bring all of that medication on your cruise. Number five, bringing banned or prohibited items on a cruise ship. Now, what happens if you do bring any of these items Items, is that they will actually be confiscated and cruise lines actually do have a list it's on their website of the items that you can't bring on a cruise now a lot of people are aware that you cannot bring an iron on a cruise but something a little less obvious is that you can't bring a clothes steamer on a cruise ship and it's actually one of the most confiscated items on a cruise ship now another thing that you can't bring on a cruise is actually a power bar that you would have from home so if you do want to have extra outlets or extra usbs then you do want to bring a cruise approved or a non-surge protected power bar. So something like this is perfect. I'll leave this as well as other useful cruise accessories in the description below. Number six, forgetting to pack a rain jacket, poncho, or umbrella. Believe me, it can rain anywhere and you want to be prepared. Number seven, now a common cruise packing mistake for Caribbean or warm weather cruises is forgetting to pack a sweater or maybe a sweatshirt or just something warm in case the weather does get cooler. And we've actually been caught on cruises in the month of January that have been Caribbean cruises where the weather's been cool and we've actually needed to wear a sweatshirt. So make sure to bring at least one sweater or warm cruise outfit. Number eight, having a leaky mess in your suitcase because you packed wine bottles in your suitcase 
or maybe toiletries in your suitcase and it spilled all over your items. So what should you do? Well, if you have wine bottles, make sure they're in your carry-on bag when you do embark on your cruise. And when it comes to toiletries, if you are going to bring full-size toiletries, make sure that you pack them or double pack them in a Ziploc bag. And maybe after that, put it in another bag as well. Just make sure that nothing leaks. And otherwise, you can bring small travel bottles that are leak-proof as well. Number nine, not bringing a cruise carry-on bag for embarkation day. Now, this is actually a common mistake for first-time cruisers who just sometimes aren't aware that it is a really good idea to bring a carry-on bag for embarkation day because, of course, it does take several hours until your luggage is actually going to be delivered to your cabin. And the things that you'll put in your carry-on bag, that's going to include everything that you will need for the first day of your cruise. Now, what I will do is I will leave a video right at the end of this one all about the things that you will want to pack in your cruise carry-on bag to make sure that you have everything you need. And by the way, this is my new cruise carry-on bag, which I'm absolutely loving. This goes straight over the suitcase handle, so super handy. And I will leave that as well in the description below. Number 10, this has to do with what you might be packing in. Are you using old luggage? The reason I mentioned this is because older luggage tends to be heavier and today's luggage is actually lightweight. At the same time, Older luggage is really hard to maneuver. The wheels weren't very good. And today's luggage, even the ones that are pretty reasonably priced, the wheels, the swivel wheels are just amazing. And it really is just so much easier to maneuver on a cruise ship, especially if you opt for self-disembarkation. Number 11, not bringing a travel luggage scale. Now, if you are flying home at the end of your cruise, you need to know that you didn't go over the weight allowance for your luggage, which does sometimes happen after a long and amazing trip. Number 12, and this is a little bit of an add-on from number 11, and this is forgetting to plan or souvenirs. So if you think that you're going to buy some souvenirs or even just some extra t-shirts, you might want to pack a little bit less well, before you go on your cruise. So you might want to leave some room in your suitcase or otherwise, a little trick is you might want to bring an extra tote bag or an extra small duffel bag that you can use as your personal bag on the flight on your way home. Number 13, forgetting to bring small bills on a cruise. It's really handy to have small bills. You're going to want to probably give a tip to the porters on embarkation day when they do take your luggage. Perhaps you want to give a tip to some of the shore excursion guides or even when you're shopping in some of the cruise destinations. Number 14, not using luggage tag holders. Now what you can do is you can actually print out your luggage tag from the cruise line and then you can fold it up the way it shows you and you can staple it like so and what some people do is they actually tape it or they laminate it so you can do all of that or you can make your life easier and you can buy luggage tag holders. Now there are a couple of sizes because it does depend on your cruise line so do make sure that you check that out. Number 15, and this is an important one that has to do with the end of your cruise. As you're packing up at the end of your cruise, don't forget to leave out an outfit for disembarkation day as well as sleepwear. So I hope that this video has been helpful as you plan your cruise. Now, if you are interested in checking out the cruise planner and looking at the packing list and all the different things that are, are included, it is $10 off right now. I will leave the information in the description below. Now, if you're a first time cruiser, please let me know. And if you've been on a cruise before, please let me know what is the worst cruise packing mistake that you have ever made. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm leaving another video right after this one all about the things that you want to pack in your cruise carry-on bag. Bye for now. Happy cruising.